Today is a good day. First ride on my Chumba Chilingua gravel bike. This is a custom steel frame made in Texas. But it wasn't always this nice. When it first came to me, it was cracked. It wasn't rideable. So how did I get here? Let's go back in time. Let's take a look. This is a Chumba Terlingua frame. I think I said that right. Chumba sold this frame for anywhere between $1,500 and $1,800, depending on what year it is. I got it a lot cheaper than that on eBay. I got it for a tenth the cost, and I got it that cheap because it's got a cracked bottom bracket. Here's the best look at the outside of that crack I could get you guys. So you can see it starts at this TIG weld here and it runs down to about this point. But there is a ripple right here in the bottom bracket tube, right in line with where we saw that crack. Starting right at the seat tube inside the bottom bracket shell is a gouge and it runs all the way around. It's the deepest right here where it meets the seat tube and it falls right in line with that crack on the outside. I'll start the repair by grinding out the crack with a Dremel. I'll then weld the crack shut and add some additional weld to reinforce the area. I'll finish the repair by painting the weld. This will help prevent it from cracking in the future. Now that the repair is done, there are some low spots in my welds. I could go back and try and fill that in with more weld, but I run the risk of burning through the tubing. So instead, I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to contour the repair with some body filler. To try and match the paint on this frame, I went to my local auto parts store and I bought every can they had. I sprayed a piece of masking tape with each, stuck it on the frame, and then I checked it out in various lighting conditions and picked the one that looked the best. I'll use some thousand grit wet or dry sandpaper to feather in the paint and then some rubbing compound to make it shine like new. I got it cheap because it had a crack in the bottom bracket. I knew that. What I didn't know and what the seller didn't mention was that it also has a crack in the carbon steerer on the fork. Here's a better look at that crack. You can see it starts right there, comes in about 3 8 of an inch, and then it starts to crack radially. But looking at that and looking at other marks on the fork here, I think somebody over tightened the stem and cracked it. So here's my plan. I've got this scrap piece of aluminum. It's larger than the ID of the tube. So I am going to turn it down until it fits in there perfectly, and then I'm going to bond it in place with some epoxy. I'm then going to through drill this and tap it so that I can still run down the screw for the cap and do the bearing preload. So I'm going to use the lathe. Let's go over there. I'll get it chucked up. We can turn it down on the outer diameter until it fits inside this tube. So the ID of the steerer tube measures 23.8 millimeters. I'm going to turn this down to 23.5 and double check the fit. That should give me a little clearance to fit some epoxy in and glue it in place.
this tube is not straight all the way through. At about 75 millimeters, it gets narrower. So I took the diameter down here so it would fit inside that. So I'm just gonna use some regular five minute epoxy to bond this in. I'm gonna take some sandpaper and scuff this up, give it a good rough surface. And then I'm also gonna run a wire brush in through the tubing here. Get everything clean, that way I've got a good surface to bond to. Just like that, some time, some energy, some tools, a little know-how, and I've got a frame that should stand the test of time. This frame came with titanium hardware, aluminum dropouts, and aluminum cable guides. And just like the frame, it all needs to be reconditioned. I own a couple other gravel bikes, and I'll admit, on longer rides, they're not the most comfortable. Anything over about 30 miles, I can't wait to get off of them. My goal with this one is to build an endurance gravel bike, something I can use for those longer rides. So my focus here is gonna be on comfort and on quality, reliable components. What attracted me to this frame is that it has removable dropouts. By loosening these bolts and adjusting this nut, you can move the rear axle forward or backward to accommodate the type of riding you do. Chumba also claims that in the most rearward position that this frame will support a 50 millimeter tire. I'm gonna use this bike both on the road and on gravel. So I want a drivetrain that'll work equally well in both places. I'm using a GRX drivetrain. The front is a double 4630 and I'm running an 11 speed on the rear 
11 to 34. I figure that this range should work well on gravel while still giving me decent speed on the road. I really wanted hydraulic brakes on this bike. I'm using a set of Ultegra 11 speed hydraulic shifters. I got these cheap because the shifters did not work and the levers were badly scratched. I wanted a good set of tubeless wheels and tires on this bike. I went tubeless because it's 2023 and that's what you put on a gravel bike. But more to that point, by going tubeless, it should reduce the amount of tire repair equipment that I have to carry when I ride. After several weeks of work, the day is finally here. First ride on my Chumba Talingua gravel bike. I want to get out, I want to test it on some of my favorite rides, see how it performs on the kind of riding I do. I'm going to break today into three parts. The first will be a five mile stretch of city streets taking me to the local trails. The second will be 20 miles of gravel trails. This will show me how well the bike performs on longer gravel rides. The day will end with an 8 mile stretch of single track. I don't have a lot of experience with this type of riding, but I want to know how well the bike handles it. It's going to be a full day with more than 30 miles of riding. Let's get going. I'm having a really fun day. The bike rides well. I really like the geometry. It's comfortable. The drivetrain is good. The gearing is almost perfect. And I've been impressed with these tires. 
They're quiet on the asphalt and they seem to do all right in the dirt. So now that we've seen how it rides, I want to talk about cost. Let's take a look at what I spent and what I spent it on. I wouldn't typically spend this kind of money on a bicycle. I signed up for a gravel Fondo at the end of July, and I put this bike together specifically for that race. There are a couple things I did that helped offset the cost of this build. The first, I used components that required reconditioning. By getting a frame that was damaged and getting shifters and whatnot that required work, I was able to save some money. The other is that I recently put out a bicycle video that did really well. The revenue from that video was able to offset about a quarter of the cost of this build. I've put a few hundred miles on the bike since I put it together, mostly on gravel trails. I've been really happy with it. The only change I've made since then is I replaced the headset. The only thing I'm not happy with are the brakes. They feel really wooden. I think I used the wrong size brake hose, so I will probably redo the brake hose. I really enjoyed this project and I had a lot of fun making today's video. If you enjoyed watching it, if you found it interesting, consider liking and subscribing. It's the best way to support my channel, help with future growth, and allow me to do more projects like this. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.